I'm at the love of my life in 2020 and we are getting married halfway across the world this summer. Before he proposed, most of you knew him as Mystery Bay. Yes, he wore this mask on my social media pages throughout our entire relationship and he finally revealed himself when he proposed on May 31st, 2022. This was one of the dreamiest days of my life and I really wish I could say the same about the wedding planning process, but planning our Lebanese wedding has honestly been one of the most stressful experiences of my life. I am taking you through the entire process from the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Some of you know me for my skits and pranks, and although there are a lot of laughs, unforgettable experiences, and special memories in this series that make this entire wedding planning process worth it, there are also raw and unfiltered moments I will be sharing with you. Come along with me as I travel across the world to plan my dream Lebanese wedding. This is Mystery Bay to Mrs. Bays. So people ask me this all the time. They ask me, why Deanna? When, when people meet Deanna for the first time, they're speechless. Why Hassan? He honestly completes my life in every single aspect. We're engaged. Yeah, we're engaged. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> crazy, right? <laughs> this is the modern day love story. Wait. We don't have to wait. Babe, why are we doing this? I thought the reveal already happened. Hey, babe, it's for the trailer. Just keep going, keep going. I have dreamt about having a Lebanese wedding ever since I was a little girl and I realized that it's really hard to imitate that extravagant Lebanese wedding in the States. The weddings in Lebanon are just different. Their production, their entertainment, their venues, their fireworks, everything is just so much more elevated and grand and extra. And Hassan and I are both originally from Lebanon so I decided, you know what? A wedding is once in a lifetime and I want my dream wedding to come to life. So I decided that we are having our wedding halfway across the world in Lebanon. My ideal wedding would be keeping it to like 20 or 30 people rather than like 200 people. And a super boutique wedding, maybe in like San Diego or somewhere in like Cabo, like an island. The reason for that is if you have like random people at your wedding, first of all, no one's gonna remember it. People are just gonna be talking about the wedding afterwards, not saying nice things about it. And you're sitting there paying for their food, paying for their seat, for them to talk about you afterwards. What's the point? Have like 30 people and call it a day. The cake is the most important thing to the wedding. I think most guys, probably like 90% of the guys that come, will just wanna eat the cake and leave. So just a heads up. If you're gonna spend money on anything, just let it be on the cake. about to begin wedding planning. I've actually been contacting wedding planners, as you guys know, for the past month. There's been like a little altercation, you know, you know, between us. They say wedding planning is stressful. It is. We're just in the beginning processes. For now, I know a lot of Arabs, like they get engaged and then the wedding is like two to four months later. Yeah, no, we're gonna wait a little longer than that. We don't have to wait. What did you say? We don't have to wait? Yeah, we don't have to wait. Why? Because you want a simple wedding? And I don't. You can have a destination wedding and everyone would actually enjoy it. Lebanon is a destination, darling. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No. 
destination wedding should be on like a, a resort, an island, you know, somewhere that's like maybe five, ten hours away rather than 17 hours away. That's not my vibe. An intimate wedding is not my vibe. It's fine if it's other people's vibes, it's just not my vibe. There's that first altercation I was talking about. He likes boutique. Like he wants a nice wedding, but he likes like a boutique, intimate sort of wedding, and I want a big wedding. So that's where we're at right now. So we obviously have different views on the type of wedding we wanna have, but at the end of the day, you know what they say, it's all about the bride. Now in our culture, paying for the wedding is all on the groom right here. But even with that, you find that a lot of grooms in our culture are not involved with the wedding planning process at all. Luckily, Hassan is very involved with the wedding planning process and he's been helping me a lot along the way. But sometimes he's a little too involved, um, especially with that budget. Now don't get me wrong, like I actually want a super nice wedding and I know exactly what, what type of wedding Deanna wants, uh, but we, we definitely should not be spending a million dollars on one day. Okay, what about 700,000? No. What about half a million dollars? Still no. So Hassan put a budget on the wedding. It's half the budget I had in mind. And I'm very stressed out about it. You don't know anything about stress, Diana. Like, you're only starting right now, trust me. So what are you gonna do? I don't know, I mean, he's pretty stern about it, so. You're doing it for the people anyway. They're gonna talk crap anyway. Yeah. So might as well do something intimate and spend the extra amount on the honeymoon. My yeah. yeah but... I agree with that. But I think. Oh, what do you mean you agree with Naham? No, 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 I, 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 I agree with Naham, but like, I'm all for go big or go home. And but why, not, and why not have a big wedding and a big honeymoon, you know? Yes. So then you know that we so. Okay, thank you. Did you not regret having a big wedding, Mrs. Kumala? Yes and no. Why no? In what way? I would have gone bigger. What? No. What the f? There's things you definitely have to prioritize. We bought a five bedroom, two story house here in California. So we do have high expenses, uh, especially with us trying to build our businesses. Uh, we have two businesses that we're trying to build right now. And uh, along with that comes high expenses and unpredictable expenses as well. So with that, we definitely don't want to spend a million dollars in one day. That is not the priority here, especially with us potentially building a family in the near future. Yeah, I know she doesn't want to have kids until two years after the wedding, but nothing is predictable these days. So I'd rather put that money towards investments and our future instead of spending all that money in one day. I actually appreciate that Hassan is smart and responsible with his money. I know after the wedding, we're not going to go into debt or be struggling because he's setting a budget. You would be surprised at the amount of people who spend their entire life savings on their wedding and then after the wedding they are in debt and struggling and can't even afford to buy a home and i know hassan would never let that happen to us but i also feel like he always thinks we can find a better solution to everything and is never satisfied and never wants to book anyone until we're very late in the planning process and i'm sitting here freaking out because nothing has been booked yet he has done that for every bridal event so far and it's so stressful. It literally drives me crazy. It's like I talk to 30 different planners who all tell me we need to increase our budget for the type of wedding I want. And when I relay that to him, he comes back like, no, talk to 30 more. And I think a reason he does that is because since we're having our wedding in Lebanon, he thinks it should be a lot cheaper, but that's not always the case. Weddings in Lebanon can cost a lot depending on where you have it and how you wanna do it. Especially when they see you're coming from the States. Word of advice, if you're planning your wedding overseas specifically in Lebanon, just pretend like you live there because as soon as they find out you live in the States, honey, those prices are quadrupling. All right, guys, so we are about to sit and do some planning. We are starting off just sort of looking over all the planners I've spoken to because I have a whole Excel sheet. I have a whole like Excel sheet 
I took notes on every planner I've spoken to and we're sort of just going through every single one out of like literally the 30 I talked to seeing what we liked what we didn't like of each looking at their work so the hubby is looking on Instagram at some of their work just to see examples of have they done something similar to the theme we want are they easily communicative because if we have it in Lebanon um, they need to be good at communicating otherwise it's gonna be very stressful we also wrote down a list of things to ask like how many people are gonna be attending the wedding because that makes a big difference in the budget like asking the parents what areas we want to have the wedding in because like for example Hassan's dad uh, used to live in Lebanon and he knows a lot of people in Lebanon he definitely is helping out with recommending certain venues certain areas and things like that but yeah we're just gonna be sitting here knocking this out for the next two hours or so and hopefully move on a step because it's been a month and I haven't moved forward whatsoever so now that the hubby finally has time to sit and listen and put his expertise in it we should move on a little bit after today I want to at least narrow this down to like three planners and then go from there. Uh, she said a million. She said a million. Yeah, she's the last person I'm talking to in the states because we're just gonna waste our time here, honestly. Send her a picture of this, you know, the trees right here. It's more heavenly than that bullshit. <laughs> you wanna have the wedding? Yeah. Let's just get married right now. And then, and then, and then you carry me. I think you and I should get on the other call with her. We're just gonna go in great detail about breaking down the budget, and from there is when we decide to want her. So I think the next call, I want you to be in a little because she's one of our top choices. So I think he's a no. Um, I never saw him do anything similar. His materials look cheap quality. It's another thing. That seems good. I'm not vibing with him. What I think with him is we'll find what we want and make it work. So how did Mystery Bay come about? We were literally just on the phone talking about how Arabs have a thing where they don't post about their men until they're proposed to. That was like one of those eight hour phone calls. Yeah. And we looked at like Amazon to see if there's any masks, masks. and stuff. Honestly, it was just like a random conversation and I was like, we should do something where you don't reveal yourself until the proposal but we should do like little hints over the internet that there's someone in my life and at first we honestly weren't even thinking of the mask but every time i would post like we're at dinner i would post like his hand showing or like his leg showing actually no i remember the um the first video we ever did with mystery bay yeah do you remember oh my god it was so cringe now that i think about it the, first, the first one, one the first one was like a sit down like being like okay guys so there's I, I was pretending like oh, it was a pregnancy that wasn't like the when we sat down it was during the disneyland trip but we did like a sit down video and i'm like yeah. all right guys um i have had a, i've had a secret why do i feel like this is a pregnancy announcement remember mm -hmm. and then you walk in with the mask and i'm like you guys are probably really confused right now so i was getting a lot of people dm me saying who is this mystery man whenever i would post like little hints and so that's when we thought of the idea we were like you know what we should do something where you literally wear a mask on social media and you don't reveal yourself until the proposal just because it was a unique idea i've never seen someone do anything like that before and i, I don't recommend it why that mask is so uncomfortable it is it, he actually so hates sweating it. and like yeah we should actually, we should actually customize one that's like super comfortable <laughs> they can wear it for like hours yeah, but at least now you don't have the mask. Well, the mask sort of carried on after the proposal. So obviously during the proposal is when he revealed himself. We also ended up incorporating it in the bridal shower. So when he crashed the party, he had his mask on. My dad ended up taking it off for him. So that was really cute. And then we just might incorporate it in the wedding entrance, his wedding entrance. We'll see. We're engaged. Yeah, we're engaged. That's pretty crazy. Crazy, right? Yeah. We still can't believe it! So for those of you that are planning a wedding, it's super important to set a budget. Something to keep in mind too is you always want to have a buffer, like a 30, 25 to 30% buffer because unexpected expenses will always come up. And I don't want to mention that to, to Deanna because she might use that to her advantage. If I tell her like a budget of like, let's just say a, a certain number, she might say like, oh, we can set, we can actually spend an, an extra 20, 30, 50K on it. 
My wedding day is so important to me. I've dreamt about it for so long and it is once in a lifetime. But to Hassan, it's not worth stressing over. It's just one night and it's not worth spending a large amount of money on. I get that to a certain extent. Like I would never take it to the point where we're struggling or we can't pay our bills. At the end of the day, the fact that I found my soulmate in our relationship is really all that matters. I just feel like he's setting an unrealistic budget for the type of wedding I want to have and he doesn't realize how important this day is for me. So obviously Deanna means the world to me. I want to make this wedding super special for both of us and especially for her because her dream has always been to have a super nice wedding and like I said that's that's a goal of mine as well to have that for her. But the reason why I'm having I'm setting this budget is to not be reckless because like I said we have to prioritize our life. It's definitely not a priority to spend all that money one in one night. And uh, most women think so because it, it's like their, their only day in their whole life. In reality, like you're not going to really think about your wedding day when you're having kids and, and you have super like very important things you have to take care of in your life. If I didn't truly care about Deanna, I would actually be super reckless with the money. But like I said, our future is way more important than any of this. And um, we have priorities in our life. Yo, I'm starving. Can we take a break? Anyone? So people ask me this all the time. They ask me why Deanna? And uh, it's kind of a weird question because when, when people meet Deanna for the first time, they're, they're speechless and you literally cannot find anything wrong with, with Deanna. She's beautiful, she's smart, she's outspoken. She gives great speeches at, her, at our events. I had a whole checklist of things that I wanted uh, in a woman and uh, she went above and beyond that. And uh, I couldn't be more grateful to have such an amazing person in my life and I, and I cannot wait to live uh, the rest of my life with her. Okay, why well, saying God, I have to think right now? <laughs> well, First off, one of the things that made me fall in love with him is his love for God. The very first day we met, he handed me the most thoughtful gift ever. He handed me the Holy Quran with some flowers and a note that said, he said something like, I hope our relationship can bring us closer to God or something like that. Faith is very, very important in a relationship. Other than that, he's literally my rock. Like when I tell you guys, I used to never think I would be the type of girl who was so reliant on a man. But when it comes to true love like this, believe me when I tell you, I will literally die without him. Like it's to that extent. He honestly completes my life in every single aspect. I lean on him whenever I need it. He calms me down when I'm stressed out. I would say one of my biggest love languages is acts of service and Hassan literally helps me out in every single way he can. Um, he takes my career seriously. He supports me in every way. What else? I mean, I think I said enough. <laughs> Advice for people getting married. Don't have any expectations going into the marriage. Now, of course, you guys should be having conversations uh, and agreements before even deciding to get married. But we definitely did that. The first four days of us meeting, we talked for hours. So we kind of set the expectations ahead of time and there are more like agreements uh, between the both of us. And um, I think if you go into marriage like expecting more than what you guys know you guys can provide, uh, just it comes down to loving each other for who you are and nothing more than that. Just enjoy your life together. Advice I have for people getting married. I will say do not revolve your events around other people or what other people think. Believe it or not, I want to have that big Lebanese wedding for me. Like I want to have the bridal entrance I've always dreamed about for myself. And I want to have my wedding halfway across the world for me because it's something I've always dreamt about and it's a very special day for me. No matter what you do, believe me when I tell you this, someone is going to talk. People have something to say no matter what you do. If your wedding is extra, they're going to be like, oh, it's too extra. If your wedding is simple, oh, it's too simple. Like they will find something to talk about. No matter what you do, big or small, people are going to talk. And I honestly, 
could care less about trying to attend to people's needs because this is my event, not theirs. And I'm not gonna lie, throughout my other bridal events, like my engagement party, I really, really wore myself out trying to please family and work around everyone's schedules and working around their wants, and it really took a toll on me. At the end of the day, no matter what you do, you can't please everyone and you just need to accept that. This is something I wanna look back on with our future kids years down the line and something I wanna cherish for the rest of my life. It's a celebration of our love and it's a big deal for me. But I will say wedding planning can get very, very stressful and can definitely turn you into a bridezilla. How much do you love me? Are you serious right now? <laughs> You're so mm. embarrassing. You're not posting that. Stop. How much? Stop! Tell You're them. so embarrassing. Tell them why you're crying. I'm crying because I've been a bridezilla and I'm so freaking stressed out and I feel like I'm being mean to you. I agree. That doesn't mean I don't love you. That's all. Stop! That's questionable. Stop, baby. It's embarrassing. So at the end of the day, you have to realize that your relationship is all that truly matters and you have to compromise and think about your partner as well. It is his wedding too. <laughs> I know as future brides, we forget about that, but it is his wedding too. And you want him to enjoy the day and be comfortable and happy. Nothing in the world, not even your own wedding is worth getting in the way of your relationship. Next up on Mystery Bay to Mrs. Bay's. So the wedding planning process has officially begun and the first step in the planning process is to travel all the way across the world to search for venues and try to find my dream wedding dress. I went to over 15 designers in the matter of five days and I just could not find the one. Like what in the 1750s is this? The rectangle tables, which is so uh, if you're gonna have a Lebanese wedding, you have to have fireworks. We're so behind, and you th you think like a month before we can plan the whole wedding? We can. If you continue doing this, I'm I'm done. I'm serious. My God, that's another spider. See? <gasps> it just went on my hair. That's fine. Can you see it? Nope, it's not even there. Are you sure? Yeah. <gasps> it's on me. It's on me. It's on me. Baby. It's, there. it's fine, baby. No, no, it's in my hair. No, no, it's right here. It's fine. You want to eat it? Ew! Ew, it just crawled up on me. It's okay. Okay. It's a small spider. No, it's not okay. Do you want me to test you out? <laughs> okay. Major headache. So see, I love how I'm just talking about you and you're just sitting right there. <laughs> you're not listening. You're I'm just like talking shit and you're just like... I just don't understand. How could you do this to me? You know what I mean? 